Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barrett. You know what I get to do? I get to hang out with the really cool people that are really smart and I just get to ask them questions about things that you're dealing with all day long. How cool is that? And our goal is to create a better practice and a better life. And today I've got two of our amazing coaches on and our amazing video producer, Andy. So thank you guys for being on. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Oh, look, they're, they're, they're trying to be. Thanks for joining us, Andy. <laughs> hey, my pleasure. Andy doesn't even know. Andy's like, no, no, I don't need to be here. And like, we just, we just love having you here because you produce oh, yeah. tons of video on some excellent pieces of dentistry. And today we're going to, we're just going to ask you questions. Is that all right? <laughs> okay. Good luck, listeners. There you go. So I've got Ariel and uh, Adriana on here. And if you guys haven't met them, you have to meet them. They are awesome, awesome coaches. And they are the kind of, not kind of, the people that keep it going, keep it organized, they put our clients in the right place. And today we got a special, we've got a whole theme going here. Heather put together this theme. It's say this, not that. Now I'll explain what it, that is. It's probably one of the most requested documents we have because verbal skills matter in a dental practice. And what we really try to do is train team members just to say and think things a little bit more differently. Is that, can I even say it? I don't even know if I said that. Look at that. I'm say, say things more, and I didn't even say it correctly, but the whole idea is verbal skills matter. And you know, as a dentist, like when you can communicate and create value through your verbal skills, it transforms the experience for the patient. I say this a lot, but your ability to communicate as a team will determine how far you go. And I'll also couple it with this. I have a special place in my heart for team members because especially admin team members, because there's just not a lot of support for what to say and how to say it. A lot of team members, if you're a team member, listen, you know how this works. You find a great practice to work for or work with. And some dentist says, just go. And you go, go where? And they go, go up front and you go, okay. And so you have to deal with all the pre-existing conditions and relationships and you just try to figure it out. And so our goal today is to give you some help. What do you think? Good idea. Great idea. <laughs> we all can use some help. We could all use it. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about the inherent challenges. So this theme ske schedule, how important is scheduling and why is it a problem in dentistry? What do you think? Who wants to go first? I think it's extremely important. It helps us to manage our time and have predictability. Absolutely. And uh, Ariel, you know, you come from the front part of the practice being the admin side and AB, I think you've worked in every part in the dental practice, most clinic, but having the scheduled, your time really dictates a lot of your personal and professional experience in dentistry and getting the schedule right. You know how this works. You have one cancellation in hygiene. You know, you've cut the profit in half for the day. You have a second cancellation for that column. You're now working for nothing in that column. And a third one, you can pretty much guarantee that you're losing money or not making any profits in that column. So keeping the schedule together is crazy important. And number one, thinking right about the schedule, but also keeping it together as we get going. So what are one of, what are some of the, I'll start with this one. Let me, let me inject some of the biggest things I hear is like, okay, I'll just get you scheduled. When would you like to come in? Let's, we could do this as a game show. So what do you guys think of that one? Never. That's what, never. I don't want to come in. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> if I'm working the front desk, why wouldn't I say, when do you want to come in? Or, oh, here's two of them, you know, and I'm kind of leading you guys with this. When would you like to schedule? And when do you want to come in? What do you think of those two? Well, I'm first thinking no. Um, because no one wants a root canal, a crown, a filling. Um, there's only a select few of us that choose to schedule to go to the dentist. So my first thinking thought is no. Second thought is, okay, well, if I have to come in, well, I'm going to pick a specific hour and most likely they're not open. So now they're going to have to tell me no. So <laughs> that's why you don't want to ask. Ariel, I yeah. can only come in at four o'clock. That's it. Well, I, I leave at three. So good luck. <laughs> Whoa. So but you're just setting yourself up for having to set a bad experience for that patient, or you're having to get now into a conversation and we've created a barrier, an unintentional barrier, but we've created a barrier for that patient. 
Yeah, absolutely. And the bigger why behind this is that you do want to lead people into the appropriate time slots for them. I mean, no one, you should never try to fit into anyone's schedule. They should try to fit into yours correctly. What if I said, hey, I got to fly out next week and uh, I got to pick what time I departed. What a mess that would be, right? <laughs> You know, and so you have a schedule to protect and your ability to guide patients into the right spot is critical, not only to the overall flow of the day, but there are procedures you should be doing certain times a day. So I think the first part is like, let's think better about our schedule, you know, so now we can support it with verbal skills. And, um, you know, here's another one. Do you guys, do you like mornings or afternoons? Would you say that to a patient? Be honest, ever. Personally, no. For me, it depends. If the doctor does that procedure in the morning and in the afternoon, and I have both of those options, then I would because now I'm guiding them and letting them feel in control. But if the doctor only does that procedure in the mornings, and I say, you know, would you prefer Tuesday at 8 a.m. or Thursday at 8 a.m.? Um, because so it, to me, it depends if right. the doctor has that availability or if the office has that availability. Right. But in the end, you're still guiding them, you know, even with your choices of language, you know, right. into the appropriate time slots. And yeah. I think it depends on the practice. I have some practices that may have really wide open schedules. And say we do give the option of morning or afternoon to an office that is super limited in time. And if I say afternoon and the doctor does do the procedure in the afternoon, but now we're four weeks out for an afternoon. That's going to give a bad impression to the patient also like, wow, mm -hmm. they're so busy. They can't see me for four weeks. Wow. Is this the right place for me? Yeah, absolutely. And there's always a little bit of, we want what we can't have. Yes. You know, I never, mm -hmm. you know, my kids always joke, like there's nobody at this restaurant. It's probably not really good. <laughs> <laughs> Why I'm is there kid. no cars? You know? <laughs> We, we if 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 you call one of your favorite restaurants and they go, gosh, I only have one table and it's tomorrow night at seven. But you're like, yes, I want it, you know. So uh, it's the scarcity mentality. Um, also, too, I think an important concept when it comes to say this, not that, is you don't always have to know exactly what to say. You got to have an idea of what to say. And one of the things that we teach that's been taught forever is don't tell people what you can't do. Always be focused on what you can do. Can you guys explain what that is and how that might show up in a dental practice? Andy, I mean, I think that. Oh, go Andy. Oh, how go, Andy. Up in a go Andy. Well, I'm just looking back on some of my best experiences as a patient, and when I needed, um, you know, a procedure done, they would sort of guide me. Like, you know, typically I would come in at three thirty. But luckily, my practice was open till five, so they're like, "Does this time work for you?" I don't think, wait, now I'm getting it wrong. Not that this is wrong. Our afternoon still the best for you. Yes, they are. Okay, great. Next Tuesday at 3.30, that's the next opening. Can you make it? Yes. If not, it's going to be this much longer out. So exactly, kind of guiding that uh, patient to the, the best possible way that still fits in the open schedule, I think is the best way to go. Good job, Annie. See, you're, you didn't give yourself enough credit. You've been here right. long enough. By osmosis, you're picking up a lot of this. <laughs> for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. So either Ariel or AB explain like the whole concepts, um, you know, don't tell people what you can't do, tell them more of what you can do. How do you see that show up in dental practices? I mean, yeah, every day. I mean, it's just as Andy said, you know, guiding them to what we can. So no one likes to hear the word no. But we all know when we're being told no without actually being told no. So if they say, you know, oh, you know, I can only make it here at four. Oh, well, you know, doctor actually does these procedures in the morning for the best results. Well, why would I want to come in at four if I'm going to get bad results? So <laughs> I'm guiding it. So I just told them, no, they can't come in at four without saying, nope, too bad. I just said, well, actually doctor can see you on Tuesday at 8 30 um, and same thing is you know are you open on Saturdays we're open Monday through Friday you know we do have early morning appointments available and right around lunchtime if that works for you you can just guide them to what works for your schedule in there as well 
Yeah, I like how you did that. You just took it. You just said no in like the nicest way. You're like, oh my gosh. Really? Well, don't forget to smile. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important piece of it. So awesome. And I'm awesome. just thinking back of some of the other times kind of leading up to guiding to meeting procedures. Um, the hygienist would ask me kind of what if my job was still the same and what schedule I sort of work. So they had an idea of sort of what worked for me and could kind of look at what was open uh, as it was going on, knowing then that, you know, afternoons really worked the best for me and, you know, knew that I was busy in the morning. So just kind of getting that information from your patient is a good idea as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Our hygiene teams, you know, we, I'm a hygienist, obviously by degree. And as a hygienist, I would always pre-schedule my patients as they were leaving. I didn't ask them what time they preferred. I didn't ask them what day. I just went from what we were right now and moved six months in a week out. And I would say, your appointment card is in your bag. When we get closer, you'll get reminders and we can adjust if necessary. And left that, it at that. That's awesome. Well, if you know AB, you wouldn't, you know, like... <laughs> She, she just tells you what's going on in a nice way too. And you also taught me the bib thing. Like the bib thing's pretty cool. Like you just keep the bib on. Now I've been doing this for a long time. And when I heard that, I'm like, that is crazy brilliant. So if you guys listen to podcasts, check this out. Why is the bib so important when you're pre-scheduling the patient? The bib is the seatbelt. Why? You know, you get out of the car until you take your seatbelt off. So when you have that bib on, it is holding you down. It's holding you back. I'm not quite finished. I'll take your bib off once we're finished here in our appointment. So it's a signal to the patient that they are still in treatment. Mm -hmm. And I will say at the front desk, after checking out thousands of patients, <laughs> I think I've only had to remove one, maybe two bibs. And it becomes very <laughs> awkward for them. I'm at like, the front? Oh, let me so great. The front. I'm like, let me go ahead and uh, take that off for you. Um, and let's go ahead and get you scheduled because you skipped that part. <laughs> wow. That is hilarious. I've actually never I heard that, that one. That's a new one. That's a new one. That would have been so it does work. It, yeah, it does work. It keeps most patients in the chair. And it just, like you said, it lets them know, okay, now we're finished. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Now, again, on the whole topic of verbal skills, I think an important concept here is Let's not just leave everything at the front desk and throw grenades up there and say, you guys figure this out. They have to, patients have to be preconditioned on what they're going to experience before they get to the front. While Ariel has amazing verbal skills at the front, you can imagine Ariel and AB working together saying, listen, here's how this is going to work. I'm going to take you up to the front. Ariel's going to schedule you for a 7 a.m. There are no other options. She might take that bib off of you, but here's how this is going to work because and, you know, again, a special place in the heart for front desk people. I watch all these, you know, team members, nobody listens to this podcast this is doing this, but they take the pin out of the grenade and they just throw it to the person in the front. They go, good luck with that one. And then they go back and look busy and start sterilizing instruments that are already clean and other things like that. So we got to set the front desk up for success, right? And that includes say this, not that. What, what tips would you guys have on preconditioning patients at the chair? I will say the biggest gift you can give your admin team is setting the expectation for what they are coming back for and how much time they are going to be in the office. That way on that walk from your operatory to the front area, they can think, oh, wait, I have to be here two hours. And then I come back two weeks later for an hour. Okay, let me start managing in my brain, my time, my schedule. And I kind of already told them the next visit we have available is going to be next Wednesday at nine. Ariel will help you with that on your way out. So that way we've already set that in their brain and they can start rolling it around because some people are processors. They can't just make appointments on the fly. So we want to respect that. But I also, when I get up there to Ariel, I don't want Ariel to look at the patient and think, what do you need scheduled for? And then the patient says, what, two hours? She just said I had a crown. Two hours, that's crazy, you know? So we really want to give that gift of this beautiful handoff. I love yes, it. Yes, I love the handoffs because not only one, it helps you make sure that I'm scheduling correctly for your clinical schedule, but it also, I mean, that walk of amnesia, I don't know why it's real, but it's real. Oh. So the patient needs to hear it again. 
So when the patient goes to tell me, oh no, I don't need to come in in two weeks. Well, actually, they just told us together. So we'll see you at that 7 a.m. time. Uh, so it just helps and make sure, and they all know that, oh, we're on the same page. I can't play mom versus dad or aunt versus uncle. Can't play good cop, bad cop, because they know we're in communication. We're on the same page as a team. And they're just trying to see what they can get away with, right? Just human beings naturally will see what we can get away with. Yeah, human beings, kids, dogs, they all exploit the gray. Like, oh, I'm looking for the gray and I'm going to find the path of least resistance. I want to go back to the repeating thing too, because a lot of times as a professional, you think, oh gosh, I just said this. Do I really need to repeat it? And then repeat it again. You got to be okay with repeating it. Ariel, you said something in our marketing meeting this morning that I loved. You said, what did you say about the eight things? Can you repeat the eight thing? I love that. You have to say something eight times for someone to hear it one time. Whoa, that is so true. Can you explain what that means? <laughs> so just I'm naturally, right? We don't process things or hear things until we've heard it over and over and over. So, and we need to hear it seven times. So on that eighth time that you've said something, now it sinks in of, oh, okay, I got it. I know this now. I love it. I love it. And Andy, any thoughts that you have on all this? Well, your, sure, that makes sense as I'm thinking about it, you know, communicating with my wife, if like I'm ingrained into a football game and my team scores, but she says, hey, uh, I'm getting my manicure on Saturday. And then Saturday comes, I'm like, where are you going? Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, so, but if I hear it again, or if it's in the schedule, then I know it. And, you know, sometimes you might pick on a one detail sometimes it's the way it's communicated sometimes if it's said a different way that might hit home a little more with you so um i can fully agree with that eight times yeah and so i've shared with the, my wife the seven times thing but eight to hear it once that makes sense because the net on that is seven times and she's like no you just need to listen the first time and so <laughs> i think i think it's okay to repeat yourself over and over again. So again, if you're listening, taking notes at home or you're not taking notes, don't worry. We're taking notes for you. So you can flip up to the show notes is number one. You got to have a good framework of like what you want the schedule to be like. This is a great exercise for you to do as a team. What's the ideal schedule for the practice? And you should never say to yourself, well, this is the only time people come in. No, that's a self-defeating behavior. You guys are good at what you do. You should believe you're good at what you do. You should guide patients to the right thing. And that way everyone could support you with the right verbal skills. So I guess my point is this, is that a masterful person at the front that has great verbal skills like Ariel can't save the practice alone. We need help from everybody else. The great thinking from the doctor up front, you know, and team members, uh, assistants. I want to talk about the other things that happen when it comes to verbal skills. So we obviously have scheduling, but then there's other phenomenons that happen. And it's like the big three, the late, the no show and the cancel. Is there any points that you can give people that are listening, like to think better or to say better when it comes to those three struggles? Ariel, I'm a big fan of placing that I'm on hold. How do you feel about that? Wait, 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 back up. <laughs> You're never supposed to put people on hold. Amy, why would we put them on hold? Uh, I'm calling. I know I have an appointment at noon. It's 9 a.m. and I'm going to have to cancel. You know what? Let me see. Let me get your provider. I'm going to let you go ahead and talk to her. I'm going to place you on a brief hold. I'm going to give them a little bit of time to think about, can they really not make that appointment? Or could they squeeze it in today? I love that. Barrett shared that one time in a masterclass. Whenever somebody canceled a restorative appointment, yes. hold on, let me go grab Dr. Straub and I'll share this with him. And you can hear people go. Uh, uh. It's funny. Yeah. Their, their voice goes from, I can't make it to, the, to I think I can make it. You know? <laughs> it's okay to make them sweat a little bit. Yeah. It's okay to make them really think of, am I canceling for a legit reason? Because I would say, I don't know, and I'm making this percentage up, 1% of the time is canceled for a legit reason. Right. The other time is, uh, it doesn't quite work. Or you know what, lunch came up with my girlfriends. I'd much rather go do that. Let me just see. But now you're making me really, okay, I've worked myself up into creating this lie. I tried to text, that didn't work. So now I've called and now you're putting me on hold. Now you're making me feel terrible. 
but I should because I'm the one that should be showing up to my appointment. So it's okay to say, you know, and be like, ah, you know, this was a really long appointment scheduled in doctor's time, or we scheduled it specifically for you. Is there any way that you can make it? It's okay to, you know, like I said, make sure that they understand that they're really putting you at a disadvantage by doing this, or, you know, even telling them, that, you know, this is such last minute, there's no way that you can get another patient in that appointment slot. So now they're like, oh, okay, not only am I maybe hurting the doctor, but now another patient that could have been in. That's such a great point. Now, if you're listening on the podcast, you're missing out. You got to go back and watch the video and what Ariel's, because Ariel said this with just a smile and she was so <laughs> happy to say it. And that's the whole point is like, you're, you're equipped with the right thing to say, but you're saying it in a really nice way. You're also, I think it's okay to be extra honest with people in this, in this moment and let them know, like, we're not going to be able to get another patient. It could be a while before we get, get back. The worst thing you could say when it comes to say this, not that is that's okay. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. So, sure. all right, cool. And then, all right, what about, so that's canceling. What if I'm late? What if I'm habitually late? I'm always late. So I'm 20 minutes after the start of the appointment. Give us some thinking on what to say then. I can tell you from my evil hygienist days. <laughs> oh, 20 minutes. Oh, goodness. I had you for 45. You've missed half of your appointment. Whoa. And then they're just staring at you like, I'm like, oh, well, I mean, we can see what we can do, but you're going to have to come back. So now we're going to have to have two visits to make up for one. Let me see if that's okay with the doctor. Wow. Okay. Ariel, anything you would add to that? No, I mean, that's, you just tell them. Well, we had you scheduled. I don't know if we're even going to be able to do everything today. Um, unfortunately, I'll have to go check with your provider and see if, if they're okay with the amount of time we have left. Um, and then I, um, as an administrative team, I always left it up to the provider because they're the ones that know, can they get it done? Can they not get it done? Or sometimes they would say, yep, well, we can do diagnostics and the exam today, and then they can come back. Um, so I would tell them and then the patient would get upset and, you know, I'm sorry, but we had you scheduled at four o'clock and it's now 420. So next time we'll need you to show up at four o'clock. Yeah. I think the important thing is number one, letting them know this is not okay yeah. and say no problem. Because when you say no problem and they're 10 minutes late, what do you think is going to happen next time? They're going to be 15 minutes late. Now, again, I get this question all the time and you were alluding to that or it was like, they're the, you know, everybody's in a camp. Half of the camp in dentistry is like, if they come more than 15 minutes late, we don't see them and we reschedule them. And then the other's like, no, don't do that. Any thoughts on that? I mean, you pointed to it, but anything you would add for clarity around that? If it's their first time, I always say, try to see them. Of course, I'm coming from the administrative side of it too, but try to see them because they did make an effort. They did show up. And do I really want to schedule them out for the chance of them being late again, if I can just go ahead and get it done today, while still telling them that they're late, it's not okay, we're going to do what we can, and the next time I really need you to show up on time, but then they're at least appreciative of it as well. So I'm always, if you can do it, now if it's the second, third, fourth time, I, well I don't know why they're in your schedule, but if they are showing up, that's when I would say, you know, we've talked about this, Ms. Smith, we really just cannot keep doing this. We're going to have to reschedule and we're going to need you to show up on time for that appointment. That's awesome. Well, next question is for Andy. Andy, as you can see, if you're going to a practice that both of these amazing women are working <laughs> at, we're already starting to be trained on how to behave. Would you agree? Well, for sure. Part of it now as we go through this, it reminds me a little bit of my parents, right? A little bit of tough love. They want the best for you, just like your provider does, just like the services you're providing. But some of it is teaching them tough love and a lesson. They have to understand they they might learn your value. Like you'll you'll more than happy to provide the service, but you guys have to learn um, that our time matters too. And if you're coming to see us, you need to respect that and do everything you can to be on time. Whoa, Andy. The force is strong with you. <laughs> awesome. But I'm not going to mess with these two. That's for sure. 
Yeah, I wouldn't. And I think, you know, if you're listening to the verbal uh, choices, they're excellent. And I think what's really happening, I always love to like tell you exactly. I just, I love this stuff. I could talk about it all day long is we're teaching people how to treat us, you know, in a business, you teach people how to behave. You teach them how to treat you. If they constantly are late and constantly don't show, you know, basically, I mean, I, I'm not an expert at this, or maybe we are, you could sit and you could almost figure out that we've let this, we've kind of let this happen over time. And so I think that's the important thing. Now let's go to the really tough one, which is the no show, you know, no shows are the tough. Would you agree? Those are the hardest ones because sometimes we don't know these people. They won't respond any verbal skills or say this, not that you would add to a no show. I've always been the one to call and say, you know, we had to scheduled at three o'clock. I hope there's no emergency keeping you from us. Please give us a call back. Um, that way they know that we care. And the only reason that they didn't show up for their appointment, that's okay in my mind, was an emergency. Um, and then when they, if they do call and hopefully they do, that's when I would bring it back to, oh, you know, was there an emergency? Is everyone okay? Um, making sure that one, that they are okay because they know showed, but if they have to make up an excuse, it goes back to making them sweat a little bit of, oh, well, no. Well, now I also know, okay, well, I'm not going to give you those prime time slots if you just admitted to no showing for not uh, for a non-emergency. Love it. Love it. Amy, anything you would add to that on the no oh, show? I really love that. The no shows are tough. I just had this discussion with the team Monday is what do you do about a new patient that no shows? Mm. And I was like, oh, you're asking the wrong person. Because I'd say <laughs> they do not get another try. I mean, it's really challenging for someone that you know that has never no-showed before. You give them some grace. You know, something could have slipped. But for someone who you've scheduled, you had extended time for, they were confirmed, and then they just blew you off. Yeah. You, know, yes. you don't know them. So you don't have a relationship. That's a well, tough one. It is a tough one. And so I'm, we're going to go back to that one. So like, mm -hmm. I don't have all the answers, but for the most part, people don't cancel on their friends. So you said it perfectly. Like they don't, you don't know them. You know, anyone that says they get 400 or 600 new patients a month, like that sounds terrible to begin with. They aren't always the greatest patients, but the ones that get referred that are good patients, there are things we can do to improve the relationship before we see them. And so one of the steps that we kind of crossed over is calling patients in advance before their appointments. I'm a big fan. If you get a new patient, you know, if you're a restorative doc and you only have 1200 patients, you know, active in your practice and you get 20 new patients, it's worth your time just to do a small little pre phone call and just say, Hey, Adriana, this is Dr. So-and-so. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. I just want to reach out and say hi and blah, blah, blah. Um, any thoughts that you guys have on the pre-call or calling patients beforehand or even, you know, the quote unquote confirming patients with verbal skills? I love that. I really only have a couple docs that do that. Um, I have several office managers that take on that and they will, you know, I'm the office manager here. I want to make sure you have a great experience. I will be your contact. Once you come into the office, you will meet the rest of our team. They're amazing. And then it goes from there, but they know they have a point person. Right. And I, that's helpful. I love the doctor piece. Mm -hmm. My first thought of is a doctor leaves a message before I see him. <laughs> She's going to be expensive. <laughs> she's good. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that's a good thing. Mm. Ariel, anything you've noticed in a pre-call or a confirmation call and verbal skills that, that really works? Um, I just think the call in general, others, I'll, well, I'll go back to what not to say, but the call in general, if you can get the doctor to do it, that's the best, right? And then secondary, definitely a team member, especially as the world is moving to online scheduling because online appointments have literally no connection. They haven't even spoke to any team member to make this appointment. So it's very easy to cancel because they have no commitment. They have not talked to anyone. So especially with online appointments, I would say make the phone call to reach out to them and just welcome them. Even if they've already filled out all their forms, they've already got all the information, it's still nice to just welcome them and say, you know, we're looking forward to you, making sure they know, you know, where to park, whatever it may be. Um, and a couple of things in there 
that I, I hear a lot of the time is because we're trying to be nice, um, but there's ways to be nice without saying some of the key trigger words. Don't say if you need to cancel. Well, I wasn't even thinking of canceling. And now you put that world, that word out in the universe and in their mind. Or if you need to reschedule, like, please give us a call, right? It's we're trying in our minds as administrative team members, we want to know ahead of time, right? We want to avoid the no show. But now we've put it out there where if I never tell you it's okay to cancel or I never even say the word cancel, it's not in your mind. You're not thinking, oh yeah, she told me to call her if I needed to cancel. Um, so yeah. I just say like, keep those words out of your vocabulary when you're scheduling, when you're making phone calls, if you're confirming, you know, just don't give them the option. Yeah, and I would say, because you guys, have heard me, I would say get rid of the word cancel completely. Nobody ever cancels on you. The new phrase is there's a change in schedule. Because if you're ever calling a patient going, we had a cancellation today, you, you could probably just trade that out for violated. Hey, uh, Ariel, we had a patient violate us today and just totally blew us off. You know, hey, you want to come in? No, like in a great business, in a great dental practice, they don't have cancellations. They might have a change in schedule, which is just a nicer way to say it. Now, one more thing I want to go back to is if you were listening very carefully, this is the cool part, is when you're calling a patient, if you're the doctor calling the patient, you're not soliciting a call back. You're just letting them know you're thinking about them and you're looking forward to see them. You're not saying, hey, here's my cell phone. Call me tonight because I really want to say hi and talk about the Packer game. You know what I mean? No, you're not saying that. You're just saying, I'm thinking about you. And uh, it's taking the relationship to a whole nother level. Remember, at the end of the day, this is always about trust and relationships, always. So you got to make sure that your practice screams that. So I love this. And I have like 72 more thoughts, but like you guys are, this is like the end of our day, Kirk. I love this stuff. But like any last, Andy, I'll have you go first because we haven't, we haven't called on you enough. Any last thoughts when it comes to say this, not that in the schedule? Well, I really like going back to the last part about adding value with that call, whether it be the doctor or whoever. It just sort of, if, if it's a new patient and they don't have uh, any idea who you are, you're kind of building that friendship. Think about when you when you go out and meet somebody new, it's really easy to just, okay, nice to meet you, go on. But if I know them a little bit, at least it gives me something to talk about the, when I come in. And, and then I understand a little bit better uh, how things work, just kind of explain how things work here and we're on a, a schedule and, you know, without saying it, we need you to show up on time. Like we need you to show up on time. Brilliant. I think, Hey, what do you think, Ariel, AB, should we have him back? Like, as yeah. a, you're doing really <laughs> well. Right? Well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of this. Um, you know, hopefully I haven't bored you listeners too much. So thank you for uh, having me today. You're not giving yourself enough credit. Like on our live ones, he's got the microphone ready to go with questions. Like the last one was like on birthdays. He's also revealed like he's an expert at ribs. Like there's a lot that comes out of this, buddy. You, you know, we're going to, we're, we're going to voluntold you for a lot of this. So, <laughs> Sounds great. So Ariel, a, a B, what are your last well, thoughts when it comes to say this, not that in regards to scheduling? I would say make a short list, you know, figure out what your pain points are in your own practice and come up with some things that are comfortable and natural for you to say in your own way. You don't want to sound like a script, but you know, we can always be here to help too, to give you pointers and tips. Love it. Love it. Ariel, your thoughts. Yeah. And once you have that list, the easiest way is outside of role-playing because no one likes role-playing, but the outside of practicing is when you hang up the phone or when a patient leaves, take 30 seconds and just audit yourself and say, ah, dang it, I said cancellation. Oh, next time I won't. And that makes you aware of what you're saying. And soon you will see it gets less and less and less. And then eventually it'll become pretty much non-extinct. And sometimes you'll catch yourself, but then it'll be like a trigger in your mind of, oh, I said that. And you won't say it again. Just keep auditing yourself. That is brilliant. I love it. I love it. So I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. And remember, your ability to communicate is going to determine how far your practice goes. So a great thing to do is just, you know, share this podcast with your team and say, hey, listen, let's just talk about this and see how we see if we're all on the same page and how we can always be improving how we communicate. And then as a team member, you're going to see this. When you use some of the things that Andy, Ariel, and A.B., 
all team members that start with A. I didn't even realize that until now. That's so cool. <laughs> when you use one of these, so just like uh, Ariel said, like you're going to go, oh my gosh, that totally worked. I got her to come in at the 7 a.m. appointment. It's a layer of confidence. You'll go, I think I could do that again. And then you do it again and it works again. And so that's where the practice you know, the practicing of this really, really helps the overall experience for everybody involved. So I'm going to encourage you guys to keep showing up at the podcast. In the links down below, you can see the document, which is say this, not that. And you're going to see there's three columns. It's what typically people say in dentistry, some suggestions on what you might be able to say. And then there's a blank column. In the blank column, you could put what your office would say, and you could truly make this document your own so you don't sound like a robot. You can make sure that the verbal skills match the philosophy of the office, and that's the cool part about these tools. Thank you guys for being on. That was so fun. Thank you. <laughs> you, you should see their faces. They're like, okay, <laughs> so they keep volunteering us for these podcasts. It's going to be fun. So hope you guys enjoyed it. So uh, thank you guys for showing up. And again, um, if you weren't taking notes today, we were taking notes for you. Flip up to the notes in uh, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, whatever you're going to see. Everything we mentioned is there. There's also the links there. And if you're a dental practice struggling and you're just like, things got to be better. Hey, this is what we do. We're coaches. We take great practices and we make it better. Our whole thing is making a better practice and a better life. So if you're struggling, feel free to reach out to us or check out our study clubs, the To The Top Study Club or any of our courses. I promise you, you'll love them and we'll feed you good food and give you great information. Sound good? All right. So until we see you guys next time or you hear from us next time, keep watching or keep listening to the best practice show. You guys enjoy your day.